Okay, this, uh, this series is doing the same program in a few different languages, something new I'm trying. Um, hopefully these aren't too long, because uh, most of my tutorials I try to keep down to, you know, this is how you do one simple task. We're here, I'm actually writing out a program to, uh, to find out your odds of winning at a uh, game of toss-up. If you're not familiar with the game toss-up, uh, please be sure to watch the intro video to the series. Hopefully there's an annotation up on the screen right now. Click on that, go to the first video in this series, and it will explain the game of toss-up and what we're trying to accomplish here. But basically it's a game where you have a certain number of dice, starting with 10, but each time pulling some away, depending on how many greens you get. And uh, every time you roll, you, continue, you can choose to continue the game if you want and gain more points, but you also, anytime you roll a red die without rolling any greens, you lose and you lose all the points that you were collecting. So what are your odds with a certain number of dice of losing? Well, we've already done this program in both uh, Bash and C this week, and now we're continuing doing the same thing in JavaScript. Um, so we're going to create an HTML file here, uh, throw it, you know, get uh, some user input and pass it to a JavaScript. So uh, I'm going to use Vim as my text editor. I'll just call this tossup.html. And I'm going to create the HTML tags and my header tags here. And my body tags here. Let's, oops, you know, I should probably do this properly. Okay, and inside our head, uh, we're going to create a script. Actually, let's first get our user input here. So I am going to create a div tag here div id equals output and we're going to leave this div tag blank because this is where our output is going to go when we run the script. Next I'm going to create another div tag and I'm going to give it an ID of input because this is where we're going to be getting the user's input from. Uh, and then we're going to ask the user please enter a number of rolls. So this is the number of times we are going to roll the dice. We'll get the input type equals text. Although with HTML5 we could set that to an a integer uh, input. But we'll just, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, so we'll just use text. Next I'm going to say enter number of dice and we're going to get the input so we're just using once again text fields here uh, to get the user input uh, obviously if they put in something other than a number it would cause problems so it would be best if we were to use a uh, number input um, we'll change that in a minute maybe sticking with the notes though I try to stick with my notes while doing tutorials or I tend to screw stuff up. So here we're creating a button and that button will roll the function roll which we'll create in a moment and we'll just say run simulation and then close our button tag there. Okay we'll save that real quick and what I'll do is I will bring over here this is the folder we're in, there's our toss-up, and there's the user input, And uh, but the problem is uh, doesn't do anything yet. And if we type numbers, letters like this, uh, strings instead of uh, uh, integers, that's going to cause problems. Um, but not really a concern. Once again, this is more of a tutorial than actually writing out a program. Um, so inside our header tag, we're going to write our script tags here. And then we're going to create our function. Function 
roll, which is what we're calling when we click our button down here, our simulation button. Let's put our curly braces there. Next, we're going to create some variables. We'll create a variable called rolls, and that variable will be set to whatever we put into our uh, input down here. So to get that input, we're going to say uh, document, which is our entire HTML page, basically. And we're going to get an element from our page by its ID. And that ID will be roles, which it's checking IDs. And this has the ID of roles. And we're going to get from that the value. So whatever's inside that text box and put it into the variable roles. We're going to do the same thing with our number of dice here. So dice num equals document dot get element by ID. This time we're going to say dice underscore num, which we indicated down here. So it knows to look at that input box. And we're going to get, once again, the value uh, inside that box. Next, we're going to create a couple of variables. Wins, which we'll set equal to zero. Uh, lose for the number of losses, zero. Uh, green equals zero. Red equals zero. And die equals zero. So all those are starting off at zero because so far we haven't lost one, rolled a green or a red. Uh, next, we're going to take uh, create a, an array called dice. So we're going to say dice new array. Uh, and we're going to put inside that array six strings because there's six sides to the dice. And there's always one red, two yellow, and three green. So we have our array, with, which is our dice with six sides. And then we're going to say document dot get element by ID. That would be our output div tag, which is currently blank. But in case we want to run the simulation more than once, we are going to set the inner HTML of that equal to nothing. So if we run the simulation a second time, it will clear it out before we start rolling, which is what we're going to do now. We're going to say uh, we're going to do a for loop, and we're going to say for i, and i will equal the number of rolls. And we're going to say uh, then to check the number of rolls, the the value of i, uh, and make sure that it is greater than zero. And each time we loop, we're going to subtract one from it. So if we say we want to roll 100 times, we'll start at the value of 100. Each time it loops, subtracting one. And once it is less, uh, as long as it's, once it's less than one, so it's got to be greater than zero, it will stop once it, let me say that again. It will go until it equals zero or less which it never should because we're subtracting one each time. Then with inside that, so that's our number of rolls. Now we need to roll each die for each roll. So y equals dice num. And in the actual game of toss up, uh, you're going to have a maximum of 10. But if you want to run the simulation with 1,000, you could. Um, but that would take up a lot of screen space. Um, so now y, as long as y is greater than 0, uh, do this loop. And each time it loops, y minus minus, so y subtract 1. Oops. Now that we have that, we're going to choose a random side of the die each time we roll a dice, or each time we roll a die. So we're going to say r equals math dot floor math random uh, um, asterisk 6. So that's saying we have a die with 6 sides, pick a random number, uh, 
basically it's, it should be zero through five, but it'll, there'll be six numbers there. Uh, so now that we have that, we're gonna say die equals dice random. So here we're saying set the die that we're rolling equal to the array dice with a number here, which would be zero, one, two, three, four, or five. Um, now we're going to say document dot element or get element by ID and once again we're going to look at the output because that's what we're going to be modifying and we're going to now set the inner HTML plus equals die plus comma space semicolon. So we're going to take the value of die. See the plus equals means take whatever the inner HTML array is, which the first time we loop will be blank, um, and set it equal to whatever the die is. So it'll be a color, red, yellow, or green, and put a comma. And it will do that each time we roll a die. And now if the die equals green, then we're going to take the variable green and add one to it, which we set up here, set to zero when we start off. Now, else if um, the die equals red, oops, that should be a, and if you watch the other tutorial, the reason we're saying else if rather than else is because we could roll a yellow and they are, mm, they don't make a difference in what we're trying to figure out here because only greens and reds matter uh, in what we're trying to figure out. Okay, so now we got that. Uh, we're gonna add one to red each time we get a red. Now we're gonna say uh, document dot get ele oops, yep, element by ID once again output dot inner HTML plus equals and here we're gonna say line break. This is just like if you watch the C code tutorial, us putting in the new line character. Uh, basically we've already done our first roll with however many dice and now we're getting a new line of output. But we also need to check if at any point, uh, at any roll, we have greens equals zero and red is greater than zero because anytime you roll a red with no greens, you lose. So anytime that's true, we're going to say the variable lose, add one to it, whatever it is. Uh, and then we're gonna say else we win. And, and in this game, when I say win, doesn't necessarily mean we got any points, we just didn't lose, which means we can roll again. Okay, and then we also need to reset our variables here of green equals zero and red equals zero before we loop again. So uh, we've now done all our rolls. We've shown the output of each roll as a new line in our output div tag. Um, now we are going to show the totals. So what we'll say here is we'll say document dot get element. And really I could have um, created something so I don't have to type this out each time. And especially if I was using jQuery, I could have shortened this up a bit, but output dot inner HTML. And I'm going to just go paste, 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 because I'm going to do this three times. Um, we're going to say that the output now equals whatever it already equals plus 
new line. And then we're just going to draw a line like this just to make it a little bit easier for the user to read. Here we're going to say plus equals wins and then display the number of wins in the win variable. Once again, another new line here and plus equals uh, losses colon plus lose plus new line. And uh, of course, if we're printing out a bunch of stuff, that's going to fill up the screen. And we're kind of interested in the bottom line anyway. So now we're going to say window dot scroll to to. And we're going to say zero comma document dot body dot scroll height. So basically it's going to scroll to the very bottom of the document from the, uh, all the way to the left. And if I've typed everything right and we save that and uh, we go back to our page here, I will refresh. I'll put the number of rolls set to 100, number of dice, I'll say 5, and I'll run the simulation. And nothing happened. Let's bring up our console here, hitting F12 in, um, in uh, Chrome. Uh, oh, here it says roll is not defined. I, I know that problem because the variable should be rolls. So someplace I forgot an S. Uh, there's also another issue someplace else. Um, And define die equals red. Okay, I'll look into that one here in a second. Let's uh, see. Well, quickly, I'll go back to my console here. These are just typos on my part. Oh, it's saying that role's not role function. Role. Let's see, let's see. Unexpected token else. If, oh, because I didn't put the closing bracket there. That was here. There we go. That fixes that problem. Let's run this again. 100, 5, run simulation. Oh, that was my only problem. I just messed things up by not closing that if then statement properly. So here you can see each role. And of course, you could color code those too, uh, working here in HTML. Uh, I'll run the simulation again. I think I got the same output there. Let's run it. Uh, let's roll six dice each time. One, two, three. So it's about the same uh, speed as uh, the bash. Uh, probably a little bit slower. I don't really have any way uh, that I know of of timing this script. But there we can see uh, the output each roll. You can actually see what each roll generated and the number of times of wins and losses. Uh, run it rolling 100 times, you can easily see the percentage. We can also do 1,000 times. Let's roll that. And again, toss up. The odds are pretty much always in your favor, but you will lose occasionally. So rolling 1,000 times here is taking a little bit. Oh, you know what? This is slower than the bash because the bash, when I timed it, I believe I did 1,000 rolls and it took three seconds. And here in JavaScript, in Chrome on my machine, rolling a thousand times only six dice, which in the bash uh, test I did was ten dice, uh, is definitely taking... Oh, there was an error box of some sort there. <laughs> yeah, uh, kill the page. So, obviously, just showing different languages here. Obviously, writing a program like this in something like C is much more efficient than bash and writing something in bash is much more efficient than writing it in javascript when it comes to crunching numbers like this 
Um, so we're good if we're running, you know, a hundred rolls ten times. But I obviously would not recommend running a uh, thousand rolls in this JavaScript. But the nice thing about the JavaScript is I can throw this up on uh, on my website or load it up on my phone. And when I'm playing the game and I want to know my odds, I can just break out my phone and type it right in um, with ease. So pluses and minuses to each language. Um, and again, I'm probably not the best JavaScript programmer either. So uh, I thank you for watching, though. Uh, please be sure to check out the links in the description. One should be a link to this code. Um, so check that out. Uh, if you haven't watched the other videos in this series, click on the annotation on the screen for the playlist. And uh, also visit my site, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. Also, uh, you know, uh, be sure to let me know what you thought of this week with these tutorials, writing scripts in a few different languages. Uh, thought about doing this a few other times probably not something I'm going to do regularly but I might do occasionally if you guys are interested in just seeing how things are done in different languages even though I'm not the best at all these different languages um, and the similarities in way things are done I found writing this JavaScript code was uh, fairly similar to writing the C code even though the way they run are completely different so once again I thank you for watching and uh, I hope that you have a great day